Today, I'm going to show you how to use lighting effects in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on Flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about lighting effects. It's a really special feature built into Photoshop. Maybe you haven't messed with it before, but it's a really great way where you can actually affect, let's say you have a flat image. In this case, we're gonna take uh, basically a piece of art and make it look like it's a painting on the wall, and we're gonna make it look like the lights in the original photograph for the composite are actually shining onto the painting. It's an amazing effect and you can use it to affect the lighting in any one of your images. We're gonna show you the different types of lighting effects, whether it's a spotlight, a point light, or an infinite light. Then we're gonna go into the settings, show you guys the difference between the gloss and the metallic and the standard lighting. And then we're gonna show you how to add texture to your light to make it look like it's actually in 3D. And then at the end of the tutorial, we're gonna go into layer effects, showing you how to add a drop shadow as well as a bevel emboss, really bringing the effect to life. So here are images for today. We've got one image of basically just a wall with some lights on it and then a beautiful piece of art. Um, these are both from photolia.com. First thing I need to do, let's get these together. So we're gonna grab our move tool. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click and drag from one image to the other. There we go. You can see they're both on the same document now. We can go ahead and close this guy out. All right, let's hit F to full screen. And I'd like to mask this image in. Obviously, we don't want it to be that big, right? I want to actually just include a portion of it. And we're, <laughs> we're going to kind of recrop this, uh, this piece of art. But for this example, I think it's just fine. All right, let's go ahead and grab our marquee tool. And I want to make a marquee selection, a rectangular selection, right on the wall, right about there, kind of centered between the three lights. So we've got our selection. And it's, that's basically where I want this piece of art to be. So now I'm gonna click on my piece of art and I'm gonna click right here on my layer mask button and it's gonna turn my selection into a layer mask. So clicking on that, now that's only gonna be the visible area for this layer. So what we can do now is I can actually change those independently, the layer and the layer mask. All I need to do is unlink them. So we're gonna click on this chain link right between the layer and the layer mask. There we go. And then here on the layer itself, I can use my move tool if I'd like, and I can actually move the layer around and the layer mask is going to stay in place, which is really cool. I can also hit Command or Control T and transform that. Let's say we want it to be maybe a little bit smaller. We can, we can do that. We can decide whether we wanna include the, the nose or not. Let's go ahead and include the nose, why not? All right, there we go. So that's our, that's our piece of art right there on, on the wall. And then we can go ahead and link those back together again. And um, yeah, we're good to go. You know what? I think I want to move that up just a little bit more. Being a perfectionist here. All right, cool. So there's a piece of art on the wall, but it doesn't exactly look real yet because it's not interacting with the lights from the original image. So let's go ahead and get into our lighting effects. We're going to click on our layer, go to filter, down here to render, and then over to lighting effects. All right, so here in the lighting effects dialog, we've got a lot of new settings to look at. And we've got three different basic types of light that we can actually work with. We've got a point light, a spotlight, as well as an infinite light. So our point light right over here, you can choose the different types of light. Basically, this works as a light source, kind of like you're shining a flashlight on something. Wherever I move it to, that's going to be a little bit brighter. You can go to the left or the right, and you can see a little bit of fall off here. You can actually make the light more or less intense, as well as change the area that it actually affects. Very, very cool. Now the next light is going to be the spotlight. And this works a little bit differently. We're gonna have like an area of effect here, and then we have basically the fall off where it's gonna be brighter here, and then it's gonna fall off down towards that way. If we were to bring it back to center again, it would look a lot like a point light, but stretching it out, there we really get a spotlight effect. And we're gonna wind up using this in just a little bit. But first we need to cover the last light, and that is going to be an infinite light. And basically, this is just a light that is infinitely bright and it shines. You can choose the direction of your light as well. And it, the direction in this case doesn't really matter unless you add a texture. If you decide to add a texture, let's choose to add a red texture, then you can see that the light does in fact, well, if you look right up there, let's just uh, let's bring our intensity down a little bit. There we go. So let's take a look right up there. And as I move this around, you can see kind of changes the direction of the light. There we go. Now you can see how it actually makes, makes an effect. But if you don't have texture turned on, 
you really won't see anything when you move this around. All right, let's go ahead and turn this back to none. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the spotlight. Okay, because the lights in the ceiling or lights hanging from the ceiling actually kind of look like spotlights. So what you wanna do is kind of imitate the light that's actually in your image. Now, in this case, the light is relatively white as well. So I don't have to worry about coloring it, but if I did need to color it, I could make it a red light and there we go. We'd have like a, a red effect in, in this image. So this is going to depend very much on your image that you're actually working with, uh, whether you know you make your light color red or yellow or blue or all these other settings that we're gonna be going over in just a minute. Okay, so your intensity, that's pretty, well, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? As you go from the left to the right, the light, light is gonna get brighter and brighter and brighter. So you wanna choose an intensity that matches relatively well with the rest of your image. You can choose your hotspot, which basically is gonna define this area here, how bright the hotspot is actually going to get. So it's going to be, you know, how, basically how wide that hotspot gets and how bright that hotspot gets as well. All right, there we go. Next we have our exposure, bringing this up or down. You can really start to blow things out or keep things a little bit more in tune, which is generally, I try to stay away from blowing things out. That's like blowing, it's called blowing something out when you like pretty much lose all the detail in the highlights and they just go all the way to white. We do want to still be able to see some detail here. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. Now we have things like gloss and metallic settings. And these are going to show up basically changing the specular highlight here and making it look like it has a little bit more of a shine. You're also going to know this when you put the texture on. We're going to do that in just a second. All right, and the last thing we're going to be looking at is our ambience. As I bring this down, we're going to see basically this is the ambient light, okay? So it's like if this were in a dark room, for instance, and this were the only light on it, you'd want to have your ambience be relatively low. But since this room is pretty light, it's going to look a lot more realistic to bring the ambience much brighter. All right, let's go somewhere right about there. We do want this spotlight to you know, look like it's actually taking effect but we don't want it to take over the image. We don't want it to look like that's the only light hitting painting because that's obviously not true, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take into account what we're actually working with. And this is something that we want it to look like it's actually like a, a piece of canvas, right? Like a painting. Um, so that's not actually going to be glossy. You can see how that kind of affects the, the shine on there too. And it's, not, it's also not going to be metallic. So we're gonna take that down as well. Now it's time to make the effect look a little bit more real. We want to make it look like the spotlight is actually touching the paint on this image, creating some highlights and some shadows. So to do that, we're going to add texture. By default, the texture is going to be set to none. You have three options, red, green, and blue, and these work with the color channels in the image. So if we click on red, what it's gonna use is basically the reds in the image, and it's going to create where it, see, where it sees basically a little bit of red, it's gonna create a highlight on the top, and a shadow on the bottom based on where your spotlight actually is. And you can see as I move the spotlight around that the texture of the image changes as well, which is very, very cool. So let's see the difference between the red channel, the green channel in this case is a little bit more, <laughs> more textured, and then the blue channel. I think the red channel looks pretty good. It gives us a bit of texture, but not too much. All right, and that looks pretty good for one light. Now, I, all I have to do to duplicate that because I have this light set what I want, um, it's going to keep all these settings as I duplicate the light. So we're gonna just click on one more of these spotlights here. So click on the spotlight. There you can see we've got another one with the texture and everything on. I just need to rotate it around. There we go. All right, and we're gonna put that right up there. Very nice. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more. And ideally, these should all be the exact same exposure in the same settings because they're pretty much the same exact light. But just in case, we wanna make sure that everything looks good. In this case, I think this light could be a little bit less bright. So we're just gonna bring the intensity down of this one just a little bit, and you can choose between your lights here as well, like which light you actually want to affect. All right, and our first one, you know what, let's bring the intensity up just a little bit on that one on the center. So each of these three lights looks like it's actually hitting our painting, which is very, very cool. So we're gonna hit okay, and it's like gonna apply this texture, it's gonna apply the lighting effect to the layer. All right, let's take a look at the before and the after with just the lighting effects. This is no lighting effects at all, and here's the after, where you can actually see a lot of detail here in the painting, 
and it actually looks like the lights from above are hitting the painting on the wall. It's really cool. All right, next we're gonna go into add some layer effects and make it look like it's actually on the wall. So to get to our layer effects, just double click right here on a layer and it's going to bring up our layer style. So let's go ahead and bring this up. I just wanna make sure I can see everything. Okay, now there are two things we're gonna focus on here. We're gonna focus on bevel emboss as well as a drop shadow. Now bevel emboss is going to make it look like it's a bit more three dimensional. So let's click on bevel and emboss, let's turn that on. And there you can see right away, you can see a little bit of shadow down below and a highlight above. Now I'm just gonna place this right into the direct center middle here. This is basically the angle Let's bring this up a little bit here. This is the angle of our, of our bevel emboss. You know what, I'm gonna bring our depth up a little bit and our size so you guys can see it a little bit better. There we go. So as I change this, you can see, you know, the light would look like it's coming from the right hand side now. This is, the light would be looking from the top and from the bottom. So you can kind of change this. You've got a lot of other options here. You can have this light, you know, look like it's a chiseling, a hard chisel, a soft chisel, smooth, you can choose an inner bevel, an outer bevel, which in this case wouldn't make any sense. You can emboss it, which I think actually, you know what, we are gonna go with emboss because that looks a little bit more like a painting. All right, we can bring the size up or down. We can soften the edges however much we want as well. So we have a lot of control over what this actually looks like on our image. Now, I think the highlights are looking pretty good for the most part, but the shadows are a little bit too dark. So we can change our shadow level here just by bringing this slider down a little bit. There we go. And we can soften this up a little bit if we need to. No, you know what, I liked it a little bit. Yep, there we go, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's turn this off and on just to see what it looks like actually getting a little bit of three dimension in the painting, really cool. All right, let's jump into the drop shadow. All right, so drop shadow is right down here and this is basically gonna look, make it look like there's a shadow underneath the painting. Now the cool thing is it's going to use, if you click this global light here, it's actually gonna use the exact same angle as the bevel and emboss. So you don't have to worry about those lighting angles not actually lining up. So we can use our drop shadow here and I have a lot of options. I can choose how opaque I'd like it. Basically this is gonna be darker or lighter. I can choose my size, which is gonna feather it out a little bit more. And all these options are totally gonna to depend on your image. You can choose your distance, if you want it farther away from the wall, closer to the wall. These are all gonna depend on your image. And in this case, I, my main goal is just to make it look like it's actually part of the wall there. So what I wanna do is make sure, if you have a shadow that's a little bit too dark, especially in this case, because there's a lot of ambient light, that's not gonna look good, right? So we wanna make sure we lower the brightness down just a little bit, there we go. Just enough to make it look like it's actually on the wall, but not too much. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we have other options to play with our sizing as well. If it was like farther away from the wall or a softer light, you'd want your size to be larger, closer to the wall or a harder light, and you'd want your light, your size to be a little bit smaller. All right, that looks pretty good as well. And then we have spread, which is basically how far to the edges our drop shadow is going to go. And we're gonna bring that spread down there as well. All right, and actually I think that looks pretty good. So we've got all these options. And remember, this is gonna be different for every single photo. There's not like, you know, one key that you would just punch in and it's automatically going to look good. You have to change these settings based on what your photo looks like and the lighting in the original image. Now we're going to zoom in so we can actually see the layer effects. Okay, so we can turn these off or on individually. This bevel and emboss gives it a lot more of a three-dimensional look with highlights on the top and then shadows here on the bottom. And then the drop shadow makes it actually look like it's in place, making it seem as though the lights on the top are actually casting a shadow down beneath our object. That looks awesome. All right, let's take a look at the before and the after. So here's our before without any lighting effects at all, and here's our after, making it look like the painting is actually in the photograph. That's the end of today's episode, guys. I hope this helped out. Next time you have to place an object into a photograph and you have to match the lighting, just remember about the layer effects. In this episode, we showed you guys the differences between the point light, spotlight, as well as an infinite light. We also went over different settings, including making the image look like it was gloss, metallic, and for the really cool part, adding some texture. Then at the end, we added the layer effects to give it a drop shadow, as well as a bevel and emboss. If you guys love Photoshop and photography just like I do, hit that subscribe button on your screen. We're giving you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or comment about today's episode, leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. It's gonna use the textures. 
It's gonna take the colors on the texture channel. I don't even know how to say that. <laughs> Is that the, the A? Do you hear that? If you love Photoshop, like I do, I love it. 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 I love it.